100 here tonight. Well, it's 42 seconds left. They can. Overway goes left hand. That is basket interference. Will Bowser touched it in the cylinder, and that ball was clearly going down anyway. Jeff Spadowski on the call, and I think you can officially say now it's just about all over but the digging. Schuster, Brink, ball in the front court. Calvin knows this one belongs to the Knights. An amazing comeback win here for Calvin. A comeback as far as the season is concerned. Not so much, Brent, as far as the game, because this is the team that has been in the lead almost the entire way. Well, you got to give Hope some credit, though. They did uh, come back from double digits down, obviously, in the first half to tie this game at 47. They certainly had some momentum. But, boy, I'll tell you what, when, when this thing's all said and done in eight seconds, uh, we're going to look at the uh, rebounding statistics, and that's going to tell you the entire story of this one. Well, and really, some guys that don't show up so much on the score sheet, DeYoung with some good minutes in this game, and really Tyler Cruz was really a force, I thought. He just made it difficult for Calvin, or for Hope, to get the ball around the rim when he was in there. And, of course, Schuster, who's more of a, uh, a guy that plays on the perimeter uh, offensively. The coach against Calvin not turning out the way he might have liked. 95 to 81 is the final, and the Knights finally climb. Well, no question about it, Tom. I, I just can't remember the last time I saw any team score 95 in the Hope Kelvin matchup. I mean, these two teams over the years, and you've been covering them for well over two decades, and you know, it, you know, clearly the three ball was king tonight for both sides. And uh, boy, I tell you what, uh, Kelvin certainly had it going on. Really, you get. We thought uh, Tom Snickers was going to be the guy to stop and uh, Schuster who steps up and uh, Danny Rhodes steps up as well. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what, those, uh, two, those two guys were huge tonight. We're outscored. Equal, I would say, in a lot of ways. And fortunately for us, we got enough stops that we needed and uh, got home with a victory. Real key for you guys, your dominance on the boards, big margin that you won that. That really helped with some second chance opportunities. Yeah, you know, the first half, I think we had 10 turnovers, just careless. But the reason we were in the game or ahead a little is because we did it. Give it to my team, though. You know, they they were the ones passing me the ball and just had to put, put the shots in. Especially in the first half, you guys shot very well from the outside. It's level-wise, and we had good prep preparation, you know, and it, that's, that's good, you know, for a game like this. You had to do a lot of the ball handling. Trent Salo, you know, is not in the lineup. It fell on you, some of the other guys. There were some times where you probably thought, you know, this is getting a little tough, but you guys were able to pull it out. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's not, it's different not having Trent out there, and we've, uh, we've been battling without him, but, you know, we're looking forward to when he comes back, hopefully this Saturday. Thanks so much, Brent Ashcroft, as we take a look at uh, some of the numbers in this one. Individual scoring leaders, Rotes with 30, 17, the other scoring leaders in this one for Calvin. So that will about wrap it up for us here tonight. We're uh, certainly delighted you were able to spend the evening with us on WGBU.